everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. And this is our first Christmas Wednesday of 2021. For those of you who are new, once a month in September, October, and November, I do a Christmas themed project that may be fun, it may be easy, it may be a great gift idea, something for Christmas. Just once a month through one in September, October, and November, and then in December, I usually do two. So today is the first Christmas Wednesday. I should have decked up. You know, I'm still in 90 degree weather, so <laughs> I didn't feel very Christmassy. I feel kind of, you know, I should have, I, I will dress up next week. I mean, next week, next month for Christmas Wednesday, because it is Christmas Wednesday. So what are we doing today? I took everything off of the wall of shame. Uh, this is my ladder. I, I'm still working out how we're going to do this in this new studio. Uh, the design board is not done yet. I might be turning us around uh, in future videos to a design board. But I do have this rustic ladder that my husband built me and it's so awesome and I can hang all the quilts that I need to quilt on it. But I took everything off so you wouldn't be distracted. This is our Christmas themed table runner and it's a braid. Some people call it a friendship braid. Some people call it a um, uh, French braid. But this block right here is the braid okay and I've done a table runner within it and let me tell you guys when when I think about Christmas stuff sometimes you keep it for yourself right no lies but sometimes we're looking for things that are fast easy and simple that we can make as a gift and this truly was fast easy and fun seriously with the sashing included, it makes it so we don't have to worry about any matching seams, okay? And there's not a whole bunch of <sighs> measuring, okay? Yes, I have a certain size block that's in here. As long as it's square, it's all good, okay? So it was really important to me to do this type of block without making it hard okay because if there are people that love to get table runners for Christmas gifts I had no idea until like the last couple years uh, about two years ago I started figuring it out they really like getting table runners and this is Christmas themed this is definitely Christmas fabric so I wanted something that would be fast easy and fun you can even I can do this in a day Okay, let's be real. With pressing and cutting, it takes me two days. <laughs> Sewing takes me a day um, within a matter of hours. So truly it's fun, fast, and easy. So I'm hoping that you'll find some inspiration. I'm gonna throw up a picture here because you can't see the whole thing. I took one on uh, a brick wall for you so you could actually see the whole quilt. So I'll put a picture here so you can see it in its length and I will tell you that it finishes I'm gonna say about 47 inches now that's pushing the hard end meaning uh, it can go anywhere from 46 and a quarter to 46 and 7 eighths okay depending if you trim these down to seven and a quarter or you leave them at seven and three eighths all right so 47 ish long and 18 well tall <laughs> so that's where it's going to finish at now you can you can adjust it because they're individual blocks to whatever you feel you want but that's where this one I have five of these individual blocks here that's where it will finish if you do it the same way I do okay um, this fabric is scrumptious it is inside this braided block it is 
uh, Charm Holiday by Charm Prince for Burnitex. Okay. I actually have this on my website as a fat quarter bundle of 20 pieces and it is a really great price. So I would check that out. You get 20 pieces. I used all but three. So I used 17 of the bundles inside this. Makes it very minimal. I can make several of these with that charm pack. I can make several of these braids at this size very, very easily very affordable um, but you do get 20 pieces in the bundle i'm thinking about just doing a red and a green separate um, more to come check out the website see i think i'm going to do that just in case anybody really just wants the red and the greens and not any of the beiges or i mean some of them i would include anyway like this christmas tree here um, it's green christmas trees on an off-white background i might include that in the bundle check it out um, very soon because I'm thinking about mixing and matching some of the bundles in inside of the bundle so it won't be 20 it'll be less and it doesn't take much the background fabric um, I actually used Christmas at buttermilk acres it's snowflakes white because there are snowflakes green brick black okay so this is the white on white it's actually not a white on white, in my opinion. It's more of a dark beige on a light beige, okay? Um, and it's actually obviously designed by Buttermilk Basins and it's for Riley Blake because Buttermilk Basins does work with Riley Blake Design. So, fantabulous fabric. Absolutely love it. Worked really good with this. Um, if you were when you go to finish this as far as backing goes you'll need a yard and a half of backing and your binding will take another half a yard okay the background amount you will need a half a yard and i'm i, I always round because i'm not doing three eighths i'm not you know going anything crazy so a half a yard for your background you'll actually cut if you use yardage you'll actually cut five strips with a fabric to do the sashing and the and the top and bottom border okay for this braid it's okay if you were to do with the fabric basically you're going to need two and a half by six and a half inch strips you'll need 60 of those and you'll need five two and a half inch squares to get the 60 with the fabric, you will need 10 strips with the fabric. Now, like I said, and that's like one color, right? I mean, or 10 strips total with a fabric. I used a fat quarter bundle. So I got three going with the fabric. Um, even after I squared, I got three um six and a half by two and a half inch squares and i used 17 different prints i think <laughs> so it didn't take much <laughs> okay i've got a lot left over for a full another project or many more table runners uh it just really depends on what i'm what, what i'm feeling like i want to do right um you don't have to memorize any of that because I did get it done. I got a supply list. It'll tell you what fabric I used. It'll give you a grace a grayscale picture of this, okay? Uh, what fabric I used, how much fabric you need, and what you need to cut from that fabric. I don't write a specific pattern. That's how I keep this free. Um, that's where the video comes in but everything that you need to subcut, cut, how much yard did you need, it's all in the supply list. And I'm super stoked about this because I had to go out on a limb and do this really on my own. Um, I do have a coloring sheet for this table runner. So you don't have to do this in Christmas colors. You can do it in anything you want. And a coloring sheet, for those of you who are new, 
A coloring sheet is basically an outline of this quilt and it allows you to take a little pencil and you know coloring pencils and color different colors in it playing with color variations and it also allows you to work to see how you might want to quilt it whatever it is i've got coloring sheets up the yin yang on the website you can find that when you go to our website you can go up at, at the top or if you're on your mobile um, i would encourage you to do it on a computer so you can download it and save it you can have one heck of a library of coloring sheets um, but if you go on mobile there's a little you know lines there's like three lines that you click on that says menu or it doesn't actually say the word but it's like three or four little lines and you click on that and it gives you a drop down menu it's in the inspirations tab on our website i'll give the exact link down below in the description but that is where you find the free coloring sheet and the free supply list, okay? All there for you. <clears throat> but yes, here we are. We're gonna get started on our first Christmas Wednesday making our braided Christmas table runner. So I will Oh, speaking of, one more thing. I am so sorry. <laughs> I almost forgot. Uh, in my beginner series, there is how to square fabric. Um, and I actually had somebody ask me, how do you square fat quarters? So what I did first is I actually squared a fat quarter on video. When somebody asks, I really try to deliver. So it's a really short clip, but it, and it, there's a lot of methods, but this is mine. So the first thing you're going to see is me squaring a fat quarter. Cause like I said, I did use fat quarters for the braided section. So this is for you, girly. Thank you for asking. I'm sure there's a lot more people that are inquisitive on how you square a fat quarter. Cause some of them are pretty close and some of them, <laughs> they're pretty ugly, right? So this is my version. So that's where we're gonna start first. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so I'm first gonna show you how I do square my fat quarters. I've been asked about it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, it, I usually keep the print up because I'm going to use the print. And I'm gonna explain that here in just a second. If this was a solid, I would do the selvage to selvage with the fabric do a little dance making sure that it is square and i don't have the wrinkle i showed that in the beginner series exactly how to do that so i'll throw a link for that video up but that's if it's a solid now if you're new here you may not know this if you haven't seen the bookshelf quilt along that i did with vicki holloway which we titled a summer a summer quilting tale or a summer's tale um, the awesome Vicki and I did that together and during that time period in the book show, book quilt um, in the playlist on the video number three I talked about why you might want to use length of fabric and one of the reasons is because the print is pretty straight along the length of fabric with the fabric is selvage to selvage length of fabric is parallel to the salvage. Now I'll throw a link up for that video in case you want more detail um, about why I would use length of fabric or some places. And I give a couple of examples. I do give a good example with uh, the actual border that I utilized and the sashing that I utilized on that quilt so you can actually see the difference. But because I am going to use the print i'm going to want to keep it straight with the print which usually it's printed straight on the fabric length of fabric okay so i'm going to use a print down here okay now you might be wondering angel why are you not cutting the selvage i don't cut the selvage when i do this because i want to remember which side i squared <laughs> And if I cut the selvage, I may not know. <laughs> I may not remember and I'll have to recut it again. So this is the reason why I'm cutting it down at the bottom. 
And it also reminds me of what the fabric is and maybe the colors that are used in it. You know, all the fun stuff that we love. So, I'm lining up on a particular motif of this pattern, trying to keep it as nice and straight as possible. And just so you know, I'm actually using the little, there's a little bumps down here. Keeping them nice and straight with each other. I got a little bit, it's got a little wonkiness to the fabric a little bit, but it is pretty darn straight, I do gotta tell you. All right. I'm gonna hold this nice and tight and just use my rotary cutter and slip, slip off this edge. Now, before I go and rip it, my ruler off, I want to make sure that I did cut all the way through. So that's what I trimmed off. I try to trim as little as possible so that I have more fabric. Fat quarters are small as it is. So the next step, I use the two ruler method. And creative grid rulers usually have a dotted quarter line edge on one of the edges. So I'm going to line up that dotted line because it's easy to see all the way through that it's on the fabric and it's straight. Then I'm going to pick it. This one's not too bad. Look at that. That's pretty good. They're not all like that. <laughs> Just so you know, I've had some crazy ends to the fat quarters. Some of them are okay and some of them not so much. So, <clears throat> but this way I know we are good. I'm going to line up this second ruler with the first, making sure that it's all flush against each other. Now I'm going to apply pressure on this first one over here. Okay. But I'm not going to just slide this over because I'm, I'm worried that I may pull the fabric in such a way that will make the strip wonky and then I'm just simply going to cut off my end. Boy, that's it's it's a little bit off. I can see closer up here how it was. But it's pretty good. I do got to tell you. I could have probably could have taken less. I need a new blade, guys. <laughs> I've only cut like 16,000 quilts in the last couple of weeks. Okay. So then that's all I'm going to waste. Now this way I do know that I have a nice square, two straight lines square to each other area. And now I can cut whatever it is that I'm going to cut. So I would just then simply line up down at the bottom. Let's say I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip. This is at seven and a half because another thing, the more you cut, then you'll have to eventually re-square your fabric again. Sometimes you'll get four times, sometimes you'll get three times, sometimes you'll get five, sometimes, you know, you cut it wrong the first time. So I'm just going to simply, and I'll take a picture of this particular line. I want to make sure wherever I'm cutting, I'm cutting on the seven and a half at this point. So I'm going to keep it lined up on the edge. The line is on the fabric, not next to it, not too far in, but right on. I'll take a picture of this again and throw it here. And I would just simply give it a cut. Make sure it went all the way through before I move this ruler. Next, I want to go to the five inch line. Now you notice I'm not cutting off of this anymore, so I'm still good. It should still be square unless I cut something wrong. And I only had to cut one time on that fabric. So I'm going to make sure I'm straight down here, I'm straight along here, and then I'm simply going to cut that again. Okay. And last but not least, so that gave me one. I'll go down to the two and a half making sure that it's lined up on the fabric. The line is on the fabric, not next to the fabric.
and I'll make my last cut and again I will definitely take a picture of what on the fabric is and, sh and I will have shown it to you I just want to make sure we're nice and straight straight down here I'll give my last cut and I'll have three two and a half inch strips that I only had to cut once into the main fabric. So that's how I square my fat quarters. Um, if they have print, again, if they are solid, I typically, uh, there's a lot of things you can do, but if you really want to know if, you're, if your fabric is square, you'll fold it in half and do the wiggle wiggle dance with it. Um, do that method. And again, that link is there for you if you're <laughs> at, even at all curious of what in the heck I'm talking about. But I'll see you guys here for the next step. So what you're going to need is one two and a half inch um, square okay and 12 six and a half by two and a half inch strips or rectangles they're not strips so the first thing we're going to do is and this is just a personal preference i do lay it out okay and i make sure now when you lay it out so i'm going to put the on the on the diagonal okay on point I'm going to lay down the first strip and right next to it and then this one will be on this side and then the next one on this side and I would keep going until I laid them all out so all 13 pieces all the way through <clears throat> now my board is not big enough at this point to show you the whole thing but i think you'll understand the point this way when i lay it out i make sure so like this is directional it's the only directional print i have but i want to make sure that i lay it out appropriately okay and when i go to sew this i need to make sure that i pay attention to it okay at this point i go ahead and i pick them up in order to make a pile so I'm just going to simply pick them up in the exact order so I get a nice little pile of all of the, that way, that way, uh, pieces in the way that I want them sewn. Okay. And then I put them all in one little pile. Now I will tell you, I'm going to turn my iron on here just so we're ready because you I will press in between I think it works better I'm going to stay with you for just a little bit and show you um, how to really get this started the first two pieces are kind of backwards to me um, it is what it is so you just have to pay attention so remember we have this first block and then we have the second block and this is exactly how we're going to sew them together okay I actually take this smaller piece and I flip it right sides together and we're gonna sew on this side so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna stop right after the block the short block the two and a half inch okay so this prevents Y seams <laughs> all right so I'm gonna take this underneath my sewing table and my iron is getting ready at the same time I will be using my snips okay in between because we don't chain piece these per se so I'm just gonna I do have my quarter inch seam guide on board because you do want to sew a quarter inch okay and I'm just simply going to go ahead and get this started now I am using a dove or fill thread 2600 it's a great complimentary for all the colors incorporated and I'm stitching on a two point oh no I'm not let me change that I like to stitch on a 2.0 for my stitch length okay I'm gonna go ahead and cut threads 
cool this out. All right. Now, at this point, I go ahead and snip my threads, okay, so that they don't get involved in any of the sewing. We want to press going out. So if you remember, we added this. So this needs to be on top to press out, okay? So I'm going to flip it over. I want to press going out. I'm going to relax the seam. And I'm going to go ahead. And now you need to be gentle when you do this. You do want to press. You don't want to squiggle squaggle because this is extremely stretchy. The whole thing is really, really stretchy. Okay, so that's the first piece. Now, generally speaking, you do want to let this cool, right? But for video purposes, I'm going to keep moving forward. So the next piece is going to go on top. So you have the two pieces here. You don't want to put it over here. You don't want to put it over here, okay? It's very important that we put it on this side. Now remember, this is my directional fabric, the only one in the bunch. So at that point, I'm going to go ahead and flip it right sides together. Now, to make this easier to sew, if I were to sew with this on top, I couldn't see the bottom block, okay? So I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to sew it in this direction. Now, what's nice about it is this seam is actually going to be going down. So I won't have to worry about that seam. You want to make sure when you're doing this to pay attention to make sure your seams don't flip so it'll lay nice and flat. This looks kind of wonky and weird, but trust me, it's going to be fine because we're going to cut it off. So I'm going to pick this up, come straight to the sewing table. Let me get my thread lined up here. Now I'm actually going to start right before the block, before the two and a half inch square. I want to make sure everything's lined up though. You want to make sure you're good to go and everything is nice and straight. It's probably a lot easier if you do this before you reach the sewing table. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and lower my presser foot. And my string disappeared on me, so bear with me. There it is. Couldn't see it because it's blending so well. All right, now hang on to your thread when you do this. Okay, and we're just going to start up here and I'm going to stop down here. Now at this point, I guess you could chain piece, but I think this is the only one, guys, so... Okay, just want to make sure I'm all lined up. I'm going to go ahead and cut threads. Pull that out. Bring it over to the sewing table. The first thing I'm going to do is clip the thread. Okay, now I need to know which way do I want to press. Let's, let's flip this the correct direction. I want to press going towards that black piece. Okay, so I want the black piece to be on top. So I'm going to go ahead and relax my threads. Open it up and simply press. Press, press, press. Don't squiggy squaggy. It won't work out for you. You don't want to pull too much. Okay, and again, it's beneficial if you let this rest. Okay, however, we need to keep the video moving. <laughs> so, here's our first three pieces. Now it really gets a lot easier, so I'm only going to do a couple more with you. But, again, we want it to lay on this side. You don't want to be matching the strip next to it. We don't want that. We want to match next to this one because... Just think of it as like closing the door. We're gonna close up that seam. We're gonna make sure that that seam is intact. You're gonna put right sides together and you're gonna start here and sew down. Put this to the sewing machine. Make sure she's all lined up and pretty. Hang on to your thread. It's always helpful. <clears throat>
Okay, just want to make sure she's nice and straight. I'm going to lower the presser foot. I'm going to, sorry if my hand's in the way for just a second. I want to start right before it. We're going to cut it so it really is okay. All right. We're going to simply go ahead, hang on to that thread so she doesn't disappear. Now this thread, I, I mean this thread, this seam, I happen to know is coming towards me. So it should not flip when it goes over that plate. And simply cut threads. Okay, bring it back up here. Now, which way do we want to press? We want to press going out. So I want this one on top. I'm going to go ahead and relax the thread. Oh, look, I didn't snip. We want to go, ask me how I know to a <laughs> snip that thread. The reason is, is because I, I will tell you from experience, I have caught threads in a seam and then you got to work that out. This just makes one less step for you. It'll be all clean. Give it a good press again. Whew, that's hot. Let it, let it cool if you have the time. And maybe at this point you'd be making more than one. So you could send another one through or another two through or three through at different points, having all your little piles so that they have time to cool. Okay. But then we want to take here. I'm going to make this the right direction so you can see. All right. So now we've added this piece. We want to close the door. So I'm going to add this one. I'm just simply going to fold it over. And this one, look, I think I sewed a little short on that one, but I'm just going to line it up anyway with that lip hanging off a little bit because it will be okay. Bring it over to the sewing table. And as you can see, this is going to go really quickly. Okay. This, I'm telling you guys, this table runner, I think, even with slow stitching, now notice I'm starting up here at the top because I'm going to end at the bottom. And look, I'm hiding that little bitty air. See? We're going to, I'm going to, you're going to watch me hide my mistake. All right. Now, we go ahead and lower the presser foot. I want to make sure I am straight. I want to make sure I'm not biting off too much, and I am. So bear with my hands for just a second. There we go. Okay, we want to make sure it's nice and straight. Hang on to your thread. And go ahead and start sewing. Now, this, this particular seam is facing away, so it may flip. So any time I have things like that. I make sure I, once it goes over the plate, I lift up my fabric and I make sure that that seam is good to go. Okay. So then we're just going to simply sew this straight together and get it a little bit better here. There we go. trying to keep my hands out of the way. All right, right, right past it. Go ahead and cut your thread. Pull her out. Bring it over to the table. First thing we're going to do is, whoop, got a little bit of a thread coming loose, so we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead and snip threads. Which way do we want to press? going away, going out, going this way. Okay. So go ahead and add that. Go ahead and do a flip here. Give it a nice press. Now, like I said, this is pretty stretchy. All right. 
So you got to be careful. <clears throat> Next, we're going to add on this side. So you're just going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, putting it the next one on, closing the door, flipping it right sides together. If you have directional fabric, make sure you're flipping it the way you want it to go. Bring it over to the sewing machine, and this time we're going to sew from here. It's only because if I were to sew from this direction, then this is going into my machine. This is going away. So I'm going to start here and sew all the way down. And this particular seam is facing towards me at the time. So I won't have to worry about it flipping so much. You just want to be careful. Stuff does happen. So you bring it over to the sewing machine. And this is it. So you're going to do this for the rest of the pieces until you have all 13 together. 12 six and a half by two and a half. And um, one two and a half by two and a half square. Okay. So I'm going to continue this off camera and I will come back at you with a completed block so we can start the trimming process. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. All right, so this is what you have. Nice and pretty, but that won't go in a quilt. <laughs> when I want to say before we trim this down, I highly recommend that you count your pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'll tell you why. I did not count my pieces and I ended up making one that I cut wrong or I went ahead and started cutting it and it wasn't 13 pieces and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> it was too short. So count your pieces first. Now when I talk about it being stretchy, this out worked out pretty good. I want to show you it, it is stretchy in all directions, okay? So be very careful when you handle this because it is super stretchy. This might be a good pattern to use length of width, no, <laughs> length of fabric instead of width of fabric. Um, of course, if you use jelly rolls, you don't have much choice and um, it'll be an interesting fun cut on a fat quarter. Uh, I'd have to measure to see how many you would get, but yeah, it might be, if you're using, using yardage, this might honestly be the good time to use your length of fabric instead of width. Okay. Help prevent some of that stretch. Okay. So we've counted, we've pressed, we've sewn, we are ready to cut. So the first thing that we're going to do is you're gonna line up your ruler, and I'm hoping you can see this, but if not, well, I'll see what I can do in the future here. But what you'll want to do is you're gonna to wanna to line up along your point, this, these points right here do really well at three inches. And it just so happens that when you do this, just want to make sure everything's flat, it also comes to this point at three inches and that point at three inches. Now, if for some reason you sewed a little wonky and you're not going to be cutting off the seam line, you're going to have a different size block. Okay. However, no loss, you'll just have a different size block. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and trim off that edge. Okay? And these, to me, are not throwaways. That's just my opinion. I can actually fold them together and do some small half square triangles for crumb piecing. So I'm going to save mine. That'll be totally up to you whether or not you save yours. All right, so that was the first cut. The next thing I do is I go ahead and I flip it around, okay? 
trying to decide which side the camera's on because I don't want to cut you out. All right, when you do that, whoops. Okay, what I like to do, and this is just me, my blocks come out different sizes than everybody else's that I have seen do this. And this is probably why. I am actually gonna line up these marks now on the three inches. And when I come out, this point up here will actually be on the three inch, okay? So I get that all, whoop, let me go down so I had some good measurements to work with. I'm gonna go on down, looking that it's all lining up along that three inch mark. When I feel pretty good, I do have one that doesn't, doesn't want to play nice, and that's probably the one that I cheated when I hid that extra little cut in the seam. But this is still going to work out, guys. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to go to the three inch mark. All right. I keep fussing with it. Yep. Okay. So. I am going to go ahead and I'm looking at my lines and I will tell you I've had to shift it just a bit but you want to make sure you're somewhat straight here I end up squaring again at the end so if you're not completely square it's a-okay I'm also looking at this line just out of curiosity okay when you're comfortable with what you're cutting go ahead and bring it out one more I told you I think I need a new blade all right plus I'm at a weird angle I'm trying to give you a nice cutting picture okay so at this point now it's not quiltable but we're going to go ahead and cut off the ends and I like to cut this one first and I'll explain why in just a second but when I line this up the first thing I want to do is I need to give myself enough room the first thing I'm going to want to do this point up here is kind of where I'd love to be and if I cut well, which I did, thank goodness, this point right here is going to be a quarter inch in. So I'm going to be sewing along a quarter inch away from it. The quarter inch is on this side of that point. If it's a little higher, that's okay. But I just line up along that point. And what I'm making sure is this, this 14 inch is catching all three and not anywhere that would, you know, for instance, if it was down here, I wouldn't have any fabric along here, okay? If it was here, I wouldn't have any fabric in these two spots. So when I do this, I really, really am trying to make sure that I'm about a quarter inch from that one point. I'm lined up on that other point. Might be good if I'm straight. Okay. All right. Making sure that 14 inches along here. Sorry, I have to bend over and get in the light, guys. I really want to be able to see this. It's sometimes helpful if you come around to the other side. But being that this is on the far side, it's hard for me to see. When I am comfortable with it, I go ahead and cut. Okay, that's the first one. Then we're gonna flip it around. And I'm gonna line up this line on the 14 inch mark. And hold on, I have one side that needs trimmed, so 
That's what I'm kind of working with. I'm actually looking along this line to make sure I'm straight and this line, because that's what I did this line off, off of. I'm on the 14. I'm on the 14, not over the 14. I'm going to catch all fabric. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simply cut. Now we have something that is peaceable. Now I will tell you the way that I just cut this, it usually measures about seven and, yep, seven and three eighths. And you can just trim it nice and pretty to make sure everything's nice and straight. Or you can cut it down to seven and, and a quarter. That is completely up to you. A lot of people say theirs finishes at six and a half. When I line up my six and a half inch line over here, okay, what I notice is that my three and a half is along these points. That's exactly three and a half inches when I line this up. Now, it's gonna seem a little bit weird to me because this would be, two, the, this one lines up at two, this one is at three and a half. If you wanna do that, that is completely up to you, but look at all the fabric that you're gonna waste. Look at all that. So, I leave mine about the seven and three eighths Okay, and just make sure that my edges are straight. You can cut it down to seven and a quarter. That is fine too. But there is your quilted, peaceable block. Okay, lots of information there. If I'm confusing, let me know. All right, the next thing that I do after I've cleaned up my workstation is I grab, I do that to every single block okay now my design board is not completely finished yet so I can't throw this complete thing up for you at this point however I would take my blocks and figure out which way I want them to go so I have two greens two blacks and a red I'm looking at these little points so I would probably, and I'll, I'll do this off camera, but I'll probably arrange it like so. Maybe not. That's a green that won't work. So let's, nope, that won't work either. So I'll have to figure this out because I don't want, I mean, it ain't going to matter. I'm going to put sashing in here, but I really don't want that. So that's two in a row. Here we'll go like this, like this. All right, there we go, perfect. Now, with your background fabric, you're gonna cut two and a half inch strips. You're going to need a total of five of them for your sashing and border, okay? I'm doing this all in two and a half inch strips, so maybe you even have a jelly roll of a certain background that you really like to use or some scraps um, of some kind of a background. And I really, my husband and I toyed with the color for a long time. So we ended up going with this white and it's four, two and a half inches wide by 14 inches long. Cause remember we cut these all at 14 inches. Once you figure out where, which direction or which placement you're going to put your blocks, you're gonna sew on the first one You'll sew one on this side. You'll, I don't know if you can see that. So on the first one, you'll sew one on this side. And I'll even go a little bit more. First one on this side and on the right, okay? That would be your first one. All the rest of them, well then the one, the three in the middle, you'll sew only on the right, okay? So only on the right. <clears throat> so you'll need six of these strips, okay? So let's see, one, two, three. So only on the right, okay? And then the last one, you will also only have to sew on the right. The only one that you have to sew both on is the first one, okay? So. 
on the first one, so on the left and the right, your 14 by two and a half inch strip, and then numbers two, three, four, and five, you're going to sew only on the right side, okay? First one gets two, the rest only need one. So once you get that done, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, I'm hoping you can see this whole thing, but here she is. Now, I wanna tell you what I did. So on that first one, that's my left here. On that first block, I added a strip to both sides and then all the rest of them, I just did it on the left side of each one, okay? After I got them all on, which goes very quickly, especially if you chain piece, I went ahead and added this block to the first one because I had this strip, so I was able to just add it on. I sewed these two together. I added the third one to the first two, and then I added the last two to the first three, okay? So I broke it up a little bit just so I could do some um, chain piecing and make things, make sure things were staying straight. I will also tell you, I, in my sashing, I pressed going towards the sashing. Now, you may see some shadowing, but I did that because there's so many seams and it'll help this lie a lot flatter, okay? Now it's still really, really stretchy, so you need to be careful. When you're sewing them on, when you're pressing, all of that stuff, you need to be very sure to be careful because it is still, I don't wanna, here, I'll do it a little bit, let's see. You can see it's, it's quite stretchy, <laughs> okay? So be very careful with this, um, but once your sashing is on, then you'll want to do your borders. Now, if y'all been around a while, you know that I don't measure for my borders. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how I pin this video, I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter, but I will tell you if you wanna see the pinning, I've done it in that video that I think I talked about earlier, um, video number three of the bookshelf quilt, and the link has been supplied, so it should still be in the bank for you. And then I also did it uh, this year in June when we did the Stars and Stripes banner, so you can actually see me do it again. And I'll throw a link. It's about minute 47, so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you've already watched it. It's around minute 47 of that video. So the link will be thrown up here. But I do want to show you, I'm, I already have one cut, okay? So... I am going to show you how I do the second one uh, before I started pinning. I just wanted to be sure I didn't pin because I didn't want to be any more confusing. So I will also tell you, you out of the five strips that you cut from the background fabric, you used two for, this, for the sashings, so you have three left. And out of these three, you will get the borders on the top and the bottom. And I did sew two of them together using a mitered corner cut, okay? And then on my, when I cut this off, I used it and I sewed it to the other one, okay? So now, let me show you. I'm not measuring, I have no tape here. I have a cutting board that is smaller than the quilt top. This is what I do, guys. I go straight down the middle. I line up one edge nice and straight. Now, whatever you do, whenever you do this, you want your quilt top to be in a place where it's not being pulled, stretched, so not hung on a wall, you know, not crazy taped down or anything. You just want it to be nice and flat and just laying the way that it wants to lay. I then simply take my border all the way across, okay? Right down about the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. Now, when I did this, I thought, well, that's a really neat design. This might come up uh, later for me. Um, I like how it's got little windows. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, add, add the top border. I'm like, oh, how cute is that? Anyway, another day, another day. Okay. You know how it goes. We're always, we're always looking at things, trying to see how um, we can put together another quilt, right? There, that was a mind thing that I had. All right, so I go all the way across. I'm gonna take my 
left over and I'm going to just simply fold it nice and straight ish I'm hoping straight you know give it a little finger press I do have scissors I take those scissors and I cut as straight as I can down that crease that I formed by doing the finger press that's my leftover if you're going to use the same color binding there you go if not we'll figure out something in the future okay add it to your stash it's a two and a half inch strip all right so now I have my border that's it guys and if you watch the video you will see how I will pin like crazy because you all know a I don't like borders and B I don't like long seams so anytime I have a long seam I pin like crazy woman I am the crazy pin lady when it comes to long strips that way I know it doesn't shift and I know it's where it's supposed to be but I'll go ahead and attach the top border the bottom border the top border and I will see you guys in just a sec so here she is all finished as a topper <laughs> we got another topper to add to the shame the wall of shame um, this one will go on my domestic uh, but she's all decked up for Christmas uh, y'all this was fast this was fun this was easy that's what it's all about um, you know when we're trying to put some gifts together and we want something really quick and easy this definitely does the trick super stoked about this now if you're wondering how i'm going to quilt it i'm actually i had a couple of ideas the first one was of course stitch in the ditch because i don't want to take away from the pattern i have since thought i may do a meander with some holly leaves so more to come on that i'll definitely show it um, during one of our christmas wednesdays I'll let you know how I finish this up. I am going to do a binding, a regular binding. I toyed with that idea too. Uh, I could have done, um, I thought about doing, I still might machine complete bind it, but I did think about doing um, hand binding because it's not very big, right? Uh, I toyed with the idea of putting at, you know, the corners and doing the easy easy way of facing it because that's all you might want to see but no I want some binding and I'm thinking about using the green the green that I was contemplating actually really surprised me this block could have gone well with it I just chose the off-white so like I said my husband and I went round and round with each other I do have a black that is like this print but the blacks don't match and it kind of looks a little off. So if you see the black, don't think it's, um, it would make it, Eric said it looked more elegant, but um, the blacks don't match and it might drive you crazy. They're a little bit different. What did match for black was Kona, uh, the jet black premium that I have in the shop. It does match the blacks in all the little blocks. <clears throat> I didn't want a solid. If you're thinking a solid and you want black, that would definitely be the way to go. But I'm probably going to do a meander with um, holly leaves just all over, very subtle. Um, that way you don't take away from the actual pattern. Uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. I hope this was inspirational. I truly do. Uh, but again, I, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, drop them down below, email me, or I will be there today at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's my time as I live here in Virginia for a live quilting and answer session, live quilting and answers. So I'll be there today to chit chat about anything that I might have left out in the video which I actually feel like there is some things um, even going through the process of building this um, and doing the video clips I can see some things I'd like to interject so I will be there live on Facebook and we'll talk about those things at 3 p.m. today but <clears throat> next week is not a Christmas Wednesday <laughs> there was just one for September so we will be back at you with something 
inspirational new for you. But until next time, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting. Happy hump day. See you at three or see you next week.